Hi, my name is Rex Beeland and welcome to this week's painting demonstration. The lesson this week is very much a beginning watercolor exercise and the, the real uh, theme of this is triads, meaning three colors, the three primaries, red, yellow, blue, and uh, in practical terms it means you can choose any yellow, you can choose any red, and that's all that you use. We're going to be uh, looking at some wet and wet technique. We're going to be looking at a little bit of brushwork, some different ways that you can hold and use the brush, and definitely uh, value is an important part of this painting. The particular colors that I'm using are Cad Yellow Medium, Cad Red Light, and Thalo Blue. So in the triadic color scheme, it's important to identify which is your main color, and approximately 60 or more percent of the painting will be uh, covered with this color. And so I've chosen Cad Red Light as my dominant color. Uh, just before we begin, I want to just, I'm just going to bring in here um, a sample that I did. Basically in this painting we have three areas. We have this entire background. We have the, the uh, tree, which is our main, the main subject. And we have the foreground. And we're going to do each of them separately. And this white in the middle is very important. And to, to leave or to make sure that stays white, we have to ensure we don't paint on it. So that we have to have a definite ending to the background and a definite beat top to the, to the foreground. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is the background is going to be wet and wet. So I'm going to soak the whole, the entire background. And you'll notice I'm going right over my main subject, the tree, but because it's going to be a much darker value. And so I can paint, the background's going to be quite light in value. So I can paint right over it with the tree, so I'm not worried. I mentioned a little bit about brushwork. And there's no, there's no brushwork involved here, I'm just soaking the painting. And, but where I do want to use it, I want to have this foreground, or pardon me, this background blend realistically or, or organically into the, that white strip. I don't just want a hard edge there. That would look most unnatural. So one thing I like to do is um, use my brush on the side. So I'm more or less painting with the side of this. I'm holding the brush um, I'm holding the brush like this so that it's parallel to the paper and I'm just kind of dragging it along a little bit. Just really just flicking it. It's probably very hard to see it but right in here there's a few irregularities which are, are what I'm after. Okay, now this is a very wet background and the paint, because my board is tilted, the paint is running down. So I need to just tilt it up a little bit to encourage the water to go the other way. This background needs to be light in value. If I bring this, the, the study I did already, you can see that the background, even though there's variety, variety in it and lots of color in it, everything in the background is lighter in value than our main subject, and that's very important. So I want as much variety as I can have in the background, but I do not want to compete in terms of value with this at all. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to think of doing this background in two stages, and I will let it dry completely between stages. Okay. So I'll start with my Thalo Blue, and I'll just go right across this. I just want to keep this fairly clean, so I'll just rub the, or clean the palette there. Bring in some of my red. And now I, do, I want to start, because I want this to blend, I'm going to start the red. Now you saw that stroke, some colors in CAD, some of the cadmiums are, are, are one of, are some of them. You need to make sure you mix it well enough. You saw a few streaks there, so that means I didn't quite mix it enough. 
But again, what I was saying is I'm going to start the red right in the blue. So hopefully it will help it blend, um, those colors blend. And then I'm going to clean the palette again because I want this background to be clean. And then I'm going to bring in some of my Cad Yellow Media. And bring it down here. And again, this is that area that I want to be more organic and uh, and a little bit ragged. I don't want a straight edge, so I'm going back to holding my brush parallel to the paper. Got it. I've mixed in a little bit of the red. It's not really critical what I use at this point, but you can kind of see when I do this. You can see there some of the effect that I'm, I'm going for. Just to make it look realistic. I'm putting these elements here, these the jagged edge, which are eventually going to be a little bit darker. But I don't put any here because I that's going to be taken up by the tree. Okay, so when I look at this, this is fine. It's just, to me, a little bit three stripes. And I want to kind of blend them more. So I'm going to go back to my phthalo blue and blend it right into the red. Then I'll go into the red and I'm being less careful about keeping a clean palette here. And then finally to the yellow. Okay, that's I'm quite fine with that. I just think I want to have a little less of the bl pure blue up there. So I'll just do that, the red. Okay, now what's important at this point is that this needs to dry totally. Okay, I've taken about a minute there to dry it. And, and this is a you know, perfectly nice background. There's a little bit of variety, so it's interesting. It's pretty dry. But it's, I want to add some more elements here to give some variety to it and uh, just to make it a little bit more interesting. And uh, so I'm going to, because red is my dominant color, I'm going to start with the red. Um, okay, so I, I want to just, I'm just thinking the uh, that this background would be full of trees and that. So I I'm going to just add some trees. I'm again going for the side of my brush. And I'm going to do a few strokes like that. And I think what I actually will do... Yeah. Okay, it's kind of a large area to be using that effect. So I'm going to go with the brush held in the regular way. So I just want to create the the effect of some trees going on here. Switch to add a bit more yellow. And now when I've got some of these shapes, I can kind of break them up a little bit with the side of my brush. When I'm doing this kind of thing, I like to work quickly. because it, I just like to work quickly. And I think it's probably a good thing. Now, the thing that I was mentioning, when I'm adding this detail, I want to stay away from this tree. There's no reason to put anything else behind there because then I'm just going to be painting over it. So I'm going to be staying away from that. Another thing I'm going to do, and this is another watercolor technique, these hard edges that you see all up here and here, there's a place for hard edges, but it's generally to have a lot of hard edges, you may want to soften some of them. So I'm taking just water, I just have water on my brush and I'm just kind of coming in and hitting some of these areas and you can see it really it tones them down and softens them and I'm thinking trees maybe some leaves so I'm just kind of flicking around in there um, I think ooh. I'm thinking that I want a little bit darker value and with these three colors, if I add a little blue to the red, I'm going to get a darker value. And I don't want this to be 
too wet. And I'm going to add a little bit more. Now I'm sort of painting tree shapes, but because the paint's wet and the paper's wet, they will probably not remain tree shapes. And I want to add, I want the darkest value to be down here at the bottom to kind of drag your eye down. My center of interest is going to be right around here. So dark, by darkening this at the bottom, it will add in, it'll tend to pull your eye down. And now I'm going to, as I mentioned, these ragged edges here. Get a little bit of the lighter color. Yeah. So just take a little bit more. And you, you start to see one of the beauties of using a triadic color scheme is you can't help but have instant color harmony. No matter what I put on, no matter what color or anything, it all kind of tends to blend together very nicely. I'm just going to take the side of my brush there. Detail is one of the things that attracts the eye. So this kind of amorphous flowing background, when you see little uh, lines strokes like this that are very definite with hard edges, it's going to tend to attract your eye. So it'll make this area here a secondary center of interest. Now the one thing I, I don't, there's a, a big tree and two little ones, so I don't want to have, I want to kind of bring the background a little bit into there. Okay. Now the only thing as I look at this, I, I need to keep in mind, and that's why I write this down, because I, it's so easy to just get involved with the color and just go with the flow, and then you lose your structure. So I write this to keep reminding myself, my dominant color is CAD Red Light. And so I need to put a little bit more of it around. Now, this is kind of an introductory lesson, or it is an introductory lesson, so I don't want to freak anybody out, but one thing I like to do a lot is splatter. And I think it'll be a great addition here to get some CAD Red light on. So I'm just hitting the brush against my finger. And one, one reason I really like that is because it's random. I can't control it. Okay, so I'm going to start to work on the tree now, and what I'm going to do, since my picture is the dominant color is CAD Red Light, I'm going to start with a wash of CAD Red Light, and I'm going to paint the entire tree with a light value, and we'll be really looking a lot at what value what value is but for now value light value means lots of water so I'm taking a wash with lots of water you can see areas here where the paint I'm putting on is touching the wet background and it's running now one thing when you're doing a tree I mean this is just something to give us an excuse to paint it. Could be anything. But in trees, make sure they get thicker towards the bottom. It's a it's a, a sort of a beginner's mistake where the tree will be thickest up here. We need it to be thickest at the bottom. Now you see this is running, but once again I'm not gonna worry about that. One thing I want to point out here though is to draw or to paint the tree sitting in realistically in grass or in the ground and you're usually going to have the grass coming up in front of the tree and so it's best accomplished by having a ragged 
bottom to the tree. Now we can change that a lot, but I'm going to leave that for now. Okay, so that's the outline of the tree. I'll leave these two small ones for now. And that's really, I've just covered it with um, a very light wash of red. And now I need to start adding some value. Um, I'm going to have the light coming from this direction. So the light will be coming in here. So this side of the tree will be the lightest. This will be the darkest. I'll take a little bit of my yellow. And I'm going to put it on the side. Nearest the source of light. So on this side I want some of the yellow. And then on the other side, I'll go more to the red. 